Panel members, my name is Roger Davis. I have a PhD in clinical psychology with perhaps 20 publications, including several co-authored books and psychological tests. Back in 2000, I served as director of research for the Surgical Eyes Foundation, now VSRN. I've communicated with about 300 patients with LASIK complications. Over 100 have told me that they've considered suicide because of their LASIK. Perhaps 90% indicate some element of deception, which then drives the development of post-traumatic stress, depression, and suicidal ideation. While director of research, we submitted a study on depression and suicidal thoughts to a major refractive surgery journal. About among 58 patients admitting suicidal ideation, 83% stated they were told they were a success by their surgeon. In 115 patients who were severely depressed, the number was 76%. Interestingly, the single complication most strongly associated with suicidal ideation was dry eye syndrome, considered a side effect or symptom. My most important point here today is that, the patient, is that patients respond emotionally to their total situation, not simply to their eyes. With minor complications, they develop various adjustment disorders. With severe complications, however, they develop what I've termed refractive surgery shock syndrome, which includes major depression, suicidal ideation, and post-traumatic stress. <clears throat> Suicidal patients pass through several stages of inquiry. First, they ask such questions as, will I ever get my vision and my life back? Why didn't they tell me this could happen? Why didn't my informed consent mention this? Why didn't my surgeon tell me I could have more than one complication? Eventually, patients move on to ask questions about their surgeon. Why is my surgeon telling me nothing is wrong with my eyes? Why are my complaints not being recorded in my medical chart? Is my surgeon really as good as he was presented? What if my surgeon really does not understand what is wrong with my eyes? If my doctor doesn't understand, will anyone understand? Eventually, patients find others like themselves on the internet, and now they begin asking questions about the industry itself. If LASIK is so safe, why are there so many other patients out there with complications? Why are so many patients telling the same story? How are they getting away with this? Why doesn't the FDA step in and stop this? Why don't honest doctors speak up about this? Is it really all about money? Am I the victim of a medical cover-up? Obviously, every patient who thinks about suicide following LASIK wants to get away from their eyes. Beyond this, however, there are individual differences. Some individuals have traveled widely looking for solutions. Since they've done everything they could possibly do, for them, suicide seems like a rational option. Here, suicidal thoughts express the desire to be done with the journey. Many individuals see themselves as victims of a corrupt industry. They feel powerless to help themselves or others. Here, suicidal wishes express the desire not to be a victim, simply to return to a world of integrity, compassion, and purity. Some patients vacillate between periods of crisis and exhaustion, living on the brink, constantly in fear that their vision is getting worse. They have no time for anti-LASIK activism. Here, suicidal wishes express the desire to escape the anxiety and unpredictability of complications. Some patients feel that no one understands their situation, not their doctor, not their family, not even other patients. Suicidal wishes express the desire to have the severity of their vision issues finally appreciated. If I kill myself, someone will finally understand how bad it was. Some patients feel that they paid to have their vision destroyed. Here, suicidal thoughts express guilt as have, at having wasted one's potential as a human being. In my experience, no pre-existing psychopathology is necessary for patients to develop suicidal ideation post-LASIK. Decades of psychological research has shown that catastrophic injuries of all kinds produce a period of prolonged psychological crisis and adjustment. Why should catastrophic LASIK injuries be any different? I have not known perfectionism or body dysmorphic disorder to play a role in post-LASIK depression or suicide. I ask that the upcoming FDA study address psychological constructs such as deception and adequacy of informed consent in existing patients. In a prospective study that could decide the future of the industry, patients may have different experiences and a higher standard of care. Also, I suggest to the panel that if the FDA wants to understand depression and suicide post-LASIK, forget about satisfaction surveys. If you want to understand suicidal patients, study suicidal patients. You can find as many as you want. Finally, I ask the panel to declare a moratorium on the use of the eczema laser for refractive surgery. Research connecting complications to quality of life problems provides the ethical basis for informed consent. 
That research should have been done 10 years ago. Because this research does not yet exist, refractive surgery cannot be performed ethically, whatever its satisfaction or complication rate. Thank you. <laughs>